This video talks about one of the lysosomal storage diseases. And in this question, a 22-year-old Caucasian male is being evaluated for skin lesion on his lower abdomen. A sample of his fibroblasts is obtained and cultured as part of the investi investigate workup. The cultured fibroblast failed to metabolize ceramide trihexoside. The patient is at greatest risk of developing which of the following conditions or etiologies. Now, from the question, it's quite clear that the patient cannot metabolize ceramide trihexoside, which gives us the indication this is a lysosomal storage disease, or one of the lysosomal enzymes are not working properly. So let's get uh, and kind of quickly look through the lysosomal storage pathways to see what disease they are talking about in this question. So in this uh, picture, I have GM2. GM2 can become GM3 using the enzyme hexosaminidase A. When this enzyme is not working, we are going to have Tay-Sachs disease. GM2 is later going to become glucocerebroside. This pathway, not so important clinically. So moving even down, glucocerebroside can become ceramide using the enzyme glucocerebrosidase. Okay. And when this pathway is inhibited, we have Gaucher disease. Now, ceramide has um, two different um, pathways. Uh, two different, three different things can make ceramide. And one of them I just told you, it's uh, the glucocerebrosidase. The other things that also leads to ceramide is going to be sphingomyelin can lead to ceramide. And when this is inhibited, by the way, the enzyme is going to be sphingomyelinase. And when this is inhibited, we have the neiman pick disease. Another pathway that can also give rise to ceramide is going to be this one, galactocerebroside. When this, uh, in this pathway is inhibited, and the enzyme in this pathway is going to be galactocerebrosidase. When galactocerebrosidase is inhibited, we have, we have Krabs disease. Okay? Don't be confused with galactocerebrosidase and galactosidase. We also have galactosidase. From ceramide to glucocerebroside, this pathway is uh, stimulated by galactosidase. When, when this is inhibited, we are going to have Fabry's disease, okay? Fabry's disease. Now, let's, uh, let's remind ourselves the question that we had. The, patient, the patient's fibroblast could not metabolize ceramide trihexoside. So where is ceramide in the picture? Uh, sorry, where is ceramide trihexoside in the picture? This is where it is. This is where our ceramide trihexoside is. By the way, there is one pathway that I forgot to mention, which is, again, sulfatides can become galacto galactocerebroside. And when this enzyme is inhibited, we have met metachromatic leukodystrophy. And the enzyme is going to be aryl sulfatase A. This uh, pathway sometimes can be confusing because the names are kind of very close together, but you know that's something we have to work on um, and put it uh, put ourselves and and kind of practice it with memory. So anyway, so the patient had uh, could not metabolize ceramide trihexoside. Don't be confused with ceramide; it's ceramide trihexoside. So the enzyme that is going to be inhibited by this pathway or the enzyme that is deficient in this pathway is going to be galactosidase and the name of the disease is going to be Fabry's disease. Now what do we really know about Fabry's disease? Okay, we, okay one interesting thing about Fabry's is that it is an X-linked disease. Okay, So what do we know about X-linked? We can only see it in boys we can also see it in Turner syndrome if the X that is remaining is going to, you know, have the, have the genetic predisposition. So other things we're going to see in Fabry's disease is going to be angiokeratoma. And I have a picture of angiokeratoma right here. They're non-blanching 
regions okay the non blanching regions in the skin usually it's from the umbilicus to the lower abdomen that's a region they're heavily seen in other uh, components of Fabry disease is going to be the we're going to have cardiovascular uh, problems we're going to have renal problems okay and anything else um, I'm trying to think here last but not the least there is also going to be neuropathy neuropathy is going to be seen in hands and feet now what's unique about Fabris is that in this disease in any of the lysosomal storage diseases you're not going to see cardiorenal involvement so if you have cardiorenal involvement and you have some sort of clue that this is going to be um, a lysosomal storage disease you have your answer or Another uniqueness about Fabry's disease is that there's going to be the X-linked thing. And one other lysosomal storage disease also deals, there is another one, not really lysosomal, lysosomal storage disease, more like mucopolysaccharidosis polysaccharidosis disease. That one is also associated with x link and that's going to be Hunter. Okay, So if you know that they're either lysosomal storage or it's a muco, muco polysaccharidosis disease then you know you have two diseases in your option okay but if there's a cardiac or renal failure or cardiac or renal problem and you know this is a lysosomal storage disease February is pretty much um, the only option now sometimes we tend to forget which substance accumulates in the body um, and sometimes we only focus on the deficient enzymes really this is a memory question again the substrate that is going to be accumulating is going to be ceramide trihexoside the enzyme deficient is going to be galactosidase uh, which was going to give rise to lots and lots of glucose cerebroside but which doesn't happen because of deficient galactosidase so now let's move back to the question one more time and the question said this patient is at greatest risk of for developing which of the following is it pulmonary emphysema hepatic cirrhosis spastic tetraparesis or renal failure obviously the answer is renal failure